Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Sunbury Motors, North 4th Street in Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. Let's go out to Las Vegas. John Clark is out there from NBC Sports Philly. John, welcome. Thank you for your time today. Yeah, thanks for having me on. hope you guys are good. All right. So Las Vegas is used to hosting big events. What's Las Vegas like on this particular day? Oh, it's a madhouse. you got uh, lots of people uh, running around in the streets, uh, a lot of people up late at night, and there's a the good vibe here today. I mean, uh, the draft was, you know, four hours and counting away, and there's just hundreds and hundreds of fans already up on the stage or right in front of the stage area uh, so they can see who their team drafts. And there's a lot of Eagles fans here today. I do see a lot of Steelers fans all over the place, so... Uh, this is something that people travel to, and when it's a place like Vegas, they're like, hey, let's get on that trip. Exactly. Uh, plus, what are they, they're going to bring the picks across, some of them across the fountains of the Bellagio, the, the water in front of the Bellagio. Is that right? You know what? That's where the red carpet is, so that's where they all arrive. Uh, yeah, but I think okay. when they're drafted, they're going to be at another outdoor stage where I'm at right now at the NFL Experience here. Uh, and then there's a big, huge Caesars Forum uh, where they're going to bring the draft picks after that. So there's a lot of moving around for the draft picks, and it's not easy to get around in Vegas. But uh, it, it's a good setup. Uh, it's going to be the, the draft experience here is great. Not as good as Philly's was, but this is pretty darn good. Right. Well, the one in Philly was the, the was unbelievable. I thought uh, in terms of the atmosphere of that, Howie Roseman yeah. balance has Howie Roseman balanced out his next two drafts by going two first this year, two first next year by making the deal that he did. All right, so now they're sitting there currently in 15 and 18. So what's your sense about what they can do with those picks? Well, look, I mean, since Howie Roseman took over fully in charge again after Chip Kelly left, he's had six drafts, and in three of those he moved up in the first round to get the guy they wanted, Carson Wentz, Andre Dillard, and Devontae Smith last year. And then one of those he traded out of the first round. They wound up getting Dallas Goddard. And twice he stayed put. My guess is I think he's working the phones, and he's already got deals in place to move up from 15 to 12, 11, somewhere around there if there's a guy there that is still um, maybe dropped a little bit or a guy that they really want is still there. I think they'll go get him. If you're talking about the receiver from Alabama, Jamison Williams, pairing him with Devontae Smith, I talked with him yesterday. He loved his meeting with the Eagles, and the Eagles told him they want to pair him with Devontae Smith, so that's a possibility. I think Kayvon Thibodeau, if he falls a little bit, that's a possibility for them to trade up and get a guy. Um, So I I do think there are guys like that that they will trade up to get. Uh, And then 18, I think there's a possibility that they trade back a little bit if – if they don't have a guy there that they are in love with because they say that once you get past 20, uh, a lot of the guys are very similar um, right. in, in talent. So if there's a guy they love, I think they draft him there at 18, maybe a cornerback, defensive line, or receiver. Um, but, but I do think there's a possibility they trade up with their first pick and then trade back a little bit with their second pick. Interesting. Interesting that they would, they would do that and think about that. So you're looking at – it, uh, again, another wide out, um, and Williamson can be exceptional. I'm sitting back, John. I'm I'm thinking back to doing, you know, the Penn State Ohio State games that I've broadcast over the years, and they had Williamson. Williams was on the same team with Wilson and Olave. I'm thinking, what the heck? <laughs> they were all together amazing. at one point. It, it is amazing. It is amazing. Uh, the secondary. What about getting secondary help? Is there enough depth? in this draft where it doesn't have to be tonight, but they can address the secondary? Well, look, I I think uh, at pick 18, they could definitely take a corner. Um, The guys that I've interviewed yesterday, Daniel Jeremiah and Charles Davis, they study the draft and everything. Uh, They like Booth. Uh, So I think think there is a possibility that they get a corner at 18. I think 15 would be more about moving up to get right. a receiver or a defensive lineman, an edge rusher. You know, I, I know they want an edge rusher. So, look, I, I think they either get a defensive lineman and receiver, 
or yeah. an edge rusher, corner, receiver. I think they're getting two of those three. Because if you look at the Eagles' history, they either draft offensive lineman, defensive lineman, quarterback, or receiver in the first round. Last time they drafted a cornerback, Lido Shepard, 20 years ago. I can't even tell you the last time they drafted a safety in the first yeah. round. Linebacker, it's been since 1979. So, look, they, they have their beliefs about the premier positions in the NFL, and that's why I'm banking on D-line, yeah. receiver, or corner. That's yeah, because, John, you know, there's – there's maybe 1,200 mock drafts out there. All right, so so we'll preface it with that. One of them did have Kyle Hamilton as a possibility from Notre Dame. And, again, he's a safety. Safeties aren't usually picked in that, that in the first 20. What would you think if they got Hamilton? Well, I think it'd be fantastic, but I think he's going to be gone. I mean, I think yeah. you know, yeah, I think he's a, good point. I think he's a top 10 pick. Um so I, I think he'll be gone. Um, but but I got to tell you, I mean, you know, I think they value the lines and then who the quarterback throws the ball to and then who's defending the pass. So, um, you know, I, I, I'm just banking on D-line, receiver, or corner. Um, I, I could I could be completely wrong, but I think, I think those are going to be the positions they go for in the first round. I think they could get a safety in the second round. They absolutely need a safety. Absolutely. They need – they need a playmaker at every level of their defense, but um, I think they go after the premier positions with, with their first yeah. couple picks. Right. Uh, there's some th- school of thought that this, because of the lack of marquee quarterbacks, like a year ago you had Lawrence first, you had Wilson going second, plus you had some others that were going to go. There isn't that kind of quarterback draft, and thus it's not quite a sexy draft. Do you feel like it's a functional draft, though, where teams can make themselves better, even though they aren't the, quote, sexiest picks out there? Well, look, I mean, if if there wa- if, the, if the Eagles were desperately needing a quarterback, this would not be a good spot. But I think they believe they're going to give Jalen Hurts the chance to be the guy. Yeah. And if he's not the guy, then next year you can get Bryce Young or C.J. Stroud, who are going to probably go, yeah. you know, in the top four picks. So, Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, this this talent pool is less than years past, um, but they're also looking at next year. I think the Eagles, they're not looking at just this draft. They're also looking at next year together, like you said. So um, they can get a quarterback next year. They have the flexibility to do that with those two first-round picks. Um, exactly. And then there's going to be more talent out. next year as well. Yeah, they balanced it out, and which which is terrific. Um, you've been able to talk to some of the draft experts. Have you been able to get uh, talk to anybody associated with the Eagles? Because that's usually a tougher task, but you have great connections too. So, well, um, I was not at their draft availability. I was sick that day, and they don't allow you to come to work if you have any right. I, uh, I got symptoms. You. So, yeah. so I wanted to stay away from everybody. So, no, I have not talked to them, but. Just, just past experience, you know how he, how he likes to move. Uh, he doesn't like to to stay put. Um, if he sees a guy that they really want, and he's three, four picks away, like last year, they wanted Devonte Smith, and they knew they had to leap over the Giants to get him, and so they worked a trade with the Devil, the Cowboys, to do that. So, you know, they're not going <laughs> to sit still. If if there's a guy that they want. And they got to move up two, three, four spots. They're going to go get them, um, and, and that is that is their mo. So um, I do think that they really like some of these receivers, and I don't think it matters that this is the third straight year they could possibly draft the receiver. I don't think it matters. You just got to get it right. And the thing with that is, is call these receivers on the free agent market who got the huge money. The Eagles they couldn't get involved in, with that. They didn't want to get involved with that. So I think this is a way to keep their costs down if you're able to have Devontae Smith and Jamison Williams as your receivers for the next four or five years under rookie deals that is unbelievable so you know I think they can get great value drafting young receivers right gotta get it right but I mean for example Olave might be there right yeah Olave Olave, Olave can play right away Williams can't play right away I mean let's be honest Williams can't play right away Hey, yeah, but I don't think the, that matters. I mean, no, I, you no, know, no. they're looking at this as right. Yeah. No, I agree with you. I agree with you, John. I'm just pointing out to the fans, like just keep yeah. that in the back of your mind that it could be mid-season before you get them. 
Uh, but sure. Olave can play right away. Dotson can play right away. There's a lot of options they have out there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's going to be a fun night. It's going to be a crazy night. Nobody knows, you know, what's going to happen after the first two. So, let me ask you, how do you now, say, so you're going in now and you don't know who they're going to pick and how it's going to turn out. So how are you going to cover this tonight? Well, you know, what kind of, quote, game plan do you have, John, about covering it? Oh, I'm just going to sit back like everybody else here in Vegas and watch it happen and then just get prepared for the Eagles' picks and then uh, and then have a fun time interviewing these uh, these young guys and watching them have their dreams come true. It's, it's really one of the great things to see, just how excited they are. But, yeah, I mean, we're just – I'm going to be like you tonight, just watching this draft and see how it unfolds and be ready. John, it's really cool you're there. Uh, I do, it, you know, they, they couldn't send out anybody better. It's awesome. So thanks so much for your time. I'll let you get back to work and enjoy another great experience of covering the draft. I appreciate it. And uh, if everybody is able to get NBC10 in Philadelphia, we're going to have our draft special tonight at 7 o'clock. We've got some exclusive interviews with guys, and I interviewed a couple of the potential draft picks out here and Howie Roseman sits down with us. So got a lot of stuff on NBC10 at 7 o'clock if you're uh, – able to tune in that is awesome thanks so much for telling us all about that john thank you for being with us hey thanks for having me on take care